everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm back with our teaser and we're going to be paint pouring. So I'm gonna show you how to take regular acrylics and give you some of my top tips for pouring. So we're gonna do a dirty pour and a clean pour. I'm just gonna share with you some top tips and things I found. I've done paint pours in the past. You can actually see a few of them above the mantelpiece over there. There's so much fun to do and I know lots of you have asked for this video so it's one of our viewer requested. And as you know, if you have a request for a video whether it's paper crafting, something a bit different like this, you can request it in the comments below. And I'm actually gonna be taking these paint pours and I'm gonna be putting them on the mantle, um, not on the mantle rather, I'm gonna be putting them on the deck flip we've been doing as part of our deck flip series. So you can check out the blog post in the description below, you'll be able to check those out. And of course, as always, all your supplies will be linked in the description below and any money saving coupons too. And if you save up to the uh, Hedgehog Hollow newsletter over at the hedgehogholo.com, you can uh, get a Friday email from us that always has uh, coupon codes and savings, a wrap up of our videos throughout the week. And also we have a crafty sales group where we post the latest coupons that go on throughout the week. I post in there most days, lots of different savings and things. You can check that out on Facebook. Now, first of all, we're going to need to get some canvases for our paint pour. So here I have the Arteza 12 by 12 canvases. I'm just gonna open these up. These are a nice cotton canvas and they're primed, ready to go. I really um, like these. They come in an eight pack. So you've got lots of uh, ways to try them out and have fun. And they're all individually wrapped too until you're ready to go. Today we're gonna do three. So I'm gonna open three of these up, ready to go. Let's grab these out and I'll put the others off to the side for now. And pop those down there. Of course, using my craft pick again to open everything up. So I'm gonna open these up. And let's say, I'm gonna show you a few different techniques for paint pouring. So you can try out some different things, just like this. Okay, so these ones are white, you can use black, you can use other colors. Um, but you know, when you can try out all sorts of different things. And here I have some Arteza acrylic paint. So these are their 14 acrylic colors and these come in little pouches like this. And then these are their outdoor acrylic colors and these come in these bottles. So you have lots and lots of different options. Now my theme for the deck is LA style. So it's greens, golds and bright pinks. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's pick out, we've got a really nice neon pink here. We've got some more greens, I've got gold. There's a, another gold in here. I'm also gonna be needing some white, so we'll pick out an appropriate white. Let's see what we've got in this one too. And you can mix back and forth, there's a really nice green here. There's lots of white, which I'm gonna be needing. So I'm gonna show you a cool technique with that too. Not sure about that green. There's black, we might need some of that because I have black and white in my theme up there too. So let's go with those. Now, with acrylic paint pouring, you're going to need a pour medium. And my tip is use Dixie cups. You can get these ones, I think these were dollar store ones or you can get them at the grocery store. Um, and so you're going to want to mix up your colors. So I'm gonna grab some of these out here. And so, Depending on the pour medium, you want to want to read your instructions, but I'm gonna use um, a deco art one. I'm gonna give it a nice shake. You can see it's a kind of fairly milky consistency. And this one, it tells you on the back, if you're using craft acrylic paints, which is what I'm using, you're gonna use a one-to-one -one consistency. So if I have this much craft paint, I just twist these off. I'm gonna pour in that much pouring medium, the same amount of acrylic paint. Grab a popsicle stick, because we all use those in our crafting. And then you're going to mix up until you have a nice kind of pourable gold solution. So I'm gonna do this with all of my colors. So I have a Dixie cup of each with pouring solution and um, my acrylic color. So you can see in there, I've got that nice kind of 
pourable colour. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do that with my greens, my pinks, my other shades of green. I'm going to go through until I have all of my colours. So we've mixed up all of our colours and you'll notice some of the colours I mixed too. And uh, the reason I've done that is because we're going to add cells to some of them, which is really fun. And you can do it a couple of different ways. You can buy a silicone lubricant, or I just really like the Dina Wakely Cell Creator. Um, it's a really easy way to go and you don't have to worry about which lubricant to buy and different things like that. So I'm going to take one of the golds and I'm also going to take one of my neon pinks. And you can do uh, different things to it as well. And literally all you take is a few drops. If you read the one on the side, it says one drop of cell creator to each cup. I actually like adding a little bit more than one drop. I probably add maybe three to each one, particularly as I've done some larger cups here. And then again, with your popsicle stick, you're gonna mix that in. And you'll notice you get some streaking. That's exactly what you want. I'm gonna put those one over to the side because I know they have my cells in. These do not have any cells in. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my canvases. I'm gonna pop some gloves on and yes, I do have pink gloves. Um, again, we'll make sure links in the video description. Gloves are kind of a key component to this. Um, they're gonna save your rings, they're gonna save your hands and you do get kind of messy. So I have a couple of different um, pairs here ready. And I'm going to take my white acrylic paint and easy way to do this is just to squirt some in the middle and the reason I like to do this is because it just gives you a different effect to your pores. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to take my big brush. You can also use gesso if you want to but I'm just going to brush some all over. So again I'm not worrying about how it looks particularly but you'll notice when we start pouring, you'll get a different effect on the one that already has some wet paint underneath. I particularly like doing this with my clean pours, so I'm gonna actually do two of them. We're gonna do a dirty pour on one with paint, we're gonna do a dirty pour on one with no paint, and then we're gonna do a clean pour on one with paint. And the one with paint with the clean pour, you'll notice you'll get a much better effect. So that's one. The same again, just take, whoops. See, that's why I wear gloves. And you'll also notice I have a drop cloth on my table. Again, because if I knock it over like this, it doesn't matter. Because afterwards, afterwards, I just take the drop cloth and I screw it up and I throw it away. And all of this is gonna mix in with our paint pour. So it all kind of mingles together at the end anyway. Don't worry about your brush strokes, brush direction, any of those things. Yes, I did not choose the best top for this either today. I did not think about floaty sleeves when I chose this. So we're gonna start with dirty pores. That means that we mix all our colors together first. And you may have heard about dirty pores. Um, and that's probably the most common one. Okay, so we've painted this surface. Now you'll also notice I'm using just disposable trays underneath. I buy these at the dollar store. Again, I'll link some Amazon links underneath but Dollar Store is a great place to get these from. And I use these cups, you can reuse these over and over. You could just use a red cup too, it doesn't have to be anything special, but this is what we're gonna pre-mix our paint in. And you're gonna want to mix maybe, I don't know, three, four, five colors if you look at the ones behind me. But think about kind of color schemes and how you want to do that. So on the deck, actually I have two of the same green, so let's add some Cell Creator to one of these greens as well. So cell creator is what gives you these really cool kind of um, cells. And if you look at my ones up here, these kind of cells up here, this is what that cell creator gives you. So it gives you these little bubbles in there. And that's what that silicone lubricant or cell creator is gonna give you. So I'm gonna mix those together. So when you start mixing your colors, and excuse my cold as well. So you're just gonna start pouring in some color. So I'm gonna start with some pink. I'm also gonna add some green with cells. Now you're not gonna mix at all. And I like to pour into the middle 
of each of my previous colours. This one's going to be super bright. As I say, they're going on my LA inspired deck too. I'm going to go back with some cell pink. Remember you can always add more colour too. So my seats, if you haven't seen them already, are black, white, and then they have uh, green leaves in them. So that's kind of what I'm channeling in this one. And then my accents are um, green, gold, bright pink, those kinds of colours. So just kind of adding some fun accents in here. Okay, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of green in the middle. Okay, so what we're now going to do is the really fun and messy part. So we're going to do our dirty pour. So you take your canvas, you're going to take your cup like this, you're going to turn it upside down and wait for your paint to go down. So we're just going to wait a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to start filling my other cup because you can kind of do a few at a time. So I'm going to do a similar process because I want it to be comparable to a degree. And this is the one that has the white underneath. So we're going to go green, pink, gold with cells. And then a fair amount of black and white because they were my key colours. Remember you can always mix up more too if you feel that you want more of a particular colour. Should this green into this one. Or gold. You can see all of that's coming down. I've got gold. The other green. Kind of a smidge more black to separate it. And bear in mind all these colours are going to move around so they're not going to stay exactly where you put them either. This one I think is going to be a bit brighter. And we're also going to add some decoration to them afterwards too. So don't think that. So I'm going to do the same on my other one. So I'm going to take my canvas, turn it upside down on my cup. And I'm going to let my colours start to go. Now we get to do the fun part. I'm also going to have a popsicle stick ready to go. So if we are ready. You get to do the fun part. And now we get to move the paint around. So when you start to kind of move the paint, you get to see, so you now get to see those layers. So the paint colors don't mix together. So you'll see I've got those ripples. I've got that very definitive black and white. And you can kind of just let everything tip. But you'll see because there's nothing underneath that's silky or wet or anything like that, it's really struggling to move around a little bit. So we can just but as those layers uncover itself, you get to see more and more of your paint pour. So I can leave that tipped like that for a minute. You'll see it looks a little bit like the agate kind of rocks and things like that. And whilst this one's tipping, I'm going to put this one over here. We can also lift up our cup on the other one because it's ready to go. So we have our cup ready. And what you're going to notice is because it has paint underneath, you can see how much smoother that one moves. So you see how that really glides so much easier. So I'm going to move these two around and then I'm going to show you how to do
So they're the dirty pour techniques and dirty obviously comes from the fact I've refilled the cup numerous times and I really love how this one came out and they've got cells coming through. I didn't like this one for the longest time. So I grabbed a piece of string, which is a technique that I saw someone do on a YouTube tutorial. Um, and then I just dragged it across and now I really love it. And we're still gonna add some more decoration to it in a bit, but I want to do a clean pour first. Now clean just refers to the fact we're not gonna be using a different cup. So I've mixed up some more of my colors and clean just means that we're going to pour our colors directly onto our canvas. Now there's lots of techniques. You've probably seen people do it through colanders that you can get at the dollar store, um, but you could do stripes and then pour them together. You can just kind of pour in different areas um, and then swirl them together. So you could do like gold swirls, um, but there is no rhyme or reason. Of course, as you mix the colors together or you, you know, do different things, you're gonna get different techniques on your canvas. Now, one thing I found with this neon pink is it doesn't matter how much I kind of mix with it, it just does not want to pour nicely. I don't know why, I even tried adding, I ran out of the um, deco up pouring solution. Uh, so I added some of the Dina Wakely pouring medium. It just does not want to pour. This is the gold with cells. So I'm gonna put some of that down here. Um, but when I allow it to mix with other pouring colors, it seems to be okay. So I'm gonna put some white around too. I'm gonna mix this white in with the black. Let's do some swirling and see what we've got so far. So you can see, you know, I can now kind of allow it to blend in different ways. And so because I've not mixed it in a cup, I get a different um, effect again. Now, the more paint you have on here, the more it's gonna to swell together. You can, you'll also have noticed that I did things where I just poured paint on the edge. So if I took some gold, for instance, and I'm gonna throw my popsicle sticks now in here. So if I just poured gold on the edge and let it dribble down, it's gonna give me a different effect. And I could mount my colors up in that same way and just let them all dribble down my canvas. This is why I have a drop cloth on my table, so it doesn't matter if they all dribble onto my tabletop. I can do the same with the pink if it will pour. Maybe my pink with cells was a bit thinner. So that will start to shine through. We can take some black. And yes, I did get some on my sleeve, but shout, I find, does just get it out. So you can see how these are mixing together. It looks totally different to the ones that we poured out the cup. And so I'm just tilting it down to allow me to pour. Also touching it, you'll notice I touched it with my finger as I went along. That again gave me a different effect. But look how different this one looks. So again, play with it. Some people do it in waves. That gives you a different effect again. You could turn it and you'll see now that now my ripples are gonna go in a different direction. It kind of again gives you a different cool effect into it. I kind of like now how it's all gonna mix in in a different way. And you might want to add a little bit of something on top of your white, maybe like a little splash of gold up here. So we'll tilt it back. And we'll just pour some down there. I'm going to add a smidge of black over the top. And that will take away some of your harshness of your white. And then you go, oh, actually, now I want you to mix back that way. Or I might want you to mix that way. So you can mix it all different ways. If you add heat to it, again, you're gonna get different effects. That's gonna affect the silicone itself. That's gonna affect a lot of your cells. Some people use a blowtorch. You can use your heat gun too. Um, you really can kind of play with this in all different ways. I kind of like that big stripe down the bottom there. 
And you'll notice for this one, I didn't have another tray, so I've just used a cardboard box and I'm gonna pop it over the corners like that. But the other thing that you can do when you're done with all of these is grab some glitter. So what do I have? I have the Arteza glitters that we used in our last video. So this is the 54 glitter jar. So I'm gonna open this one up. And I have the chunky glitters. Something else you can also do is use compressed air. So for instance, on this one, where maybe you don't want that much black, you can start moving your paint around. Or on this one, if I wanted to change this one here, see how I can kind of create different ripples in the corner. So you can really play with different mediums and different things. You can play with the air rockets we use for our alcohol inks. Um, as I say, play with your heat gun, play with different things. And you're gonna to want to let these dry for a long time, at least overnight, if not a little bit longer. But I have things like that coarse holographic glitter here. So this one has really kind of chunky pieces in it. But what you can do, and I'm gonna walk around the front slightly just to make it a little bit easier. But you can see here, so if I wanted to pick out this vein, I can sprinkle this in here. You see how I can kind of highlight that different piece of the, the rock that we created. So you can add in your chunky glitters, you can add in your gilding flakes. But these are those Arteza glitters I showed you to use on your card making last time. You can also take those ultra fine glitters that we have in here. One thing I like to do with these is kind of just look underneath. You can see like we have all these gorgeous, we even have a glow in the dark glitter, which is super fun. But I really like, I'm picking out the neon pink that I used, which is this one here. So if we, so you do want a little bit of space to do this. And I say drop cloths are perfect. I'll link these ones I have here in the video description, but you can just add a little bit of your favorite pink glitter around the edge. So you can add that and add it while the paint is wet. You could add glue afterwards if you wanted to and be more precise. Um, I don't know what other colors we had in our super chunky here. We have all of these here. You could add some of your iridescence. Just that into there. So as you can see, and I'm gonna leave the other one to be a, a super modern one because I just think that looks really cool on there. So you can see that lots of fun things that you can do with your paint pores. You can embellish afterwards, add your gilding flakes, all sorts of fun things. We're gonna leave these to dry overnight. And because I added silicone, there's a few extra things we need to do. We also need to seal them. So we will see you once these are dry, probably tomorrow, maybe the next day, but we'll see you then. So one of my favorites is the Mod Podge spray because I don't have to get any brushes dirty or anything like that. All I literally do is give it a nice coating all over like this. This is a gloss varnish. It self levels really nicely. I just give it a nice spray like this and it will dry perfectly onto my piece. It also works of course adhesive and whatnot too. I can already do this one because I didn't apply any silicone to it just like this, really easy. Make sure of course that you catch everywhere and you'll notice it kind of goes on a little beady and it'll just level itself out. And these are going outdoors so I'm gonna be really generous with my Mod Podge on it too. I still have one of my nice protectors down. So I've done this one. And then again on this one, I'm just gonna grab some talc pop it down on my surface, grab my kitchen towel, a good rub, some elbow grease, be a little bit gentle over your sequins and whatnot. If you find you can't get all of your talc off, then grab yourself some uh, a little dab of water. But I find just going to a clean area of my kitchen towel generally gets everything off. Um, sometimes it gets caught in my glitter and things, but don't tend to have too much of an issue. It's kind of buffing up nicely again. 
So just go around. And then again, just a quick spray of Mod Pro. And you see how easy this is. The one thing I'm going to say about the Mod Pro spray is just make sure you give the nozzle a really, really good clean. So once I'm done here, like this, now make sure you've got the edges of your canvas too. The poor hair just stuck in there. Is the first thing I do is I take my spray upside down and I give it a spray until my nozzle is empty. Because this is effectively a glue, as all Mod Podge is, and that makes sure my nozzle is nice and empty, it's not going to get all gunky, and I will still rinse it with a little bit of water, but that gets the worst of the adhesive out. So there's my top tip for that one as well. Thank you so much for joining me for this paint pour video. We've had so much fun. You can see on your screen how they look above the couch on the deck. I hope you've enjoyed how this project is coming along. Join us for the full review at the end of the week as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, of course, and give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed seeing this project. And hit that join button as always to be part of the Hedgehog Hollow community. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again very soon. Happy crafting, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.